From wizards to minions and a steampunk chocolate factory in between, we're putting Universal Orlando's most popular restaurants to the test. Welcome to Universal Orlando. I am headed to three very hyped spots with one question in mind, is it worth it? Are these restaurants worth the time, the cost, the crowds? Today, we're gonna find out. And first things first, we're off to the Wizarding World. Welcome friends to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, more specifically the village of Hogsmeade. This is the original Harry Potter land here at Universal Orlando and Islands of Adventure. And we are headed to the original Wizarding World restaurant, the Three Broomsticks. Why did I pick the three broomsticks for this video? Well, it's no surprise that the Wizarding World are the two most popular lands at Universal Orlando, both here again, Hogsmeade at Islands of Adventure and Diagon Alley over in Universal Studios, Florida. And while they both have a full service restaurant, here it's the three broomsticks, there it's the Leaky Cauldron, I would argue that the three broomsticks remains more popular. I think this is often the more popular park because it's also got attractions like Velocicoaster and Incredible Hulk. I would argue that this menu is a little more family friendly to more people. It serves kind of a great feast style food. So you're gonna have roasted chicken and ribs versus the more traditional English fare found over at Leaky Cauldron. And I also just think more people know about the three broomsticks are familiar with the three broomsticks in the storyline more than the Leaky Cauldron. So because of that, we are gonna dine first here in the Wizarding World, which you know I will never complain about because it's my favorite theme park lands in the entire world. Now, like I said, the menu here at Three Broomsticks is very much a great feast inspired, something that you might see the kids eat at Hogwarts. So you're gonna have fish and chips, you're gonna have that on both sides. You're gonna have a salad, you're gonna have beef pasties, which I like, but then you're gonna have your spare ribs, your chicken ribs, your smoked turkey leg, and then you can also do the great feast, which is multiple things, a platter for four for $72. That includes potatoes and corn on the cob along with your meats. I'm obsessed with it in here. It looks just like you're walking into the movie set. Now, the way they do the service kind of depends on how busy it is. Sometimes you'll have to wait in a very long line outside. I've waited upwards of an hour or longer to get inside here and get to my table. Uh, sometimes, like right now, it's not very busy, so they're doing open seating, and you can either order at a cash register or you can mobile order on the app, which is always faster. That's what I did, and then when you sit down, you let them know which table you're at, and they'll bring it right to you. So I'm excited. Haven't eaten in here in a little bit. I decided to see if I think it's worth it to eat in the Wizarding World, question mark. Food has arrived. As a heads up, it did take about 20 minutes for my food to get here, so you may wait a little bit longer than you might expect from a quick service, but I'm ready to dive in. I went for the fish and chips, as always. It's my favorite meal in the Wizarding World. This is the kids' portion, so you get one piece of fish, some of the amazing seasoned potatoes, and some grapes. I like getting the kids' meal because it's under $8. This is plenty of food for one person, um, but if you get the adult portion of this, you get three pieces of fish and no grapes. For my beverages, I went for a an lemonade and tea mixture. They do have more wizardy beverages like pumpkin juice, pumpkin fizz, uh, and a couple other things, but I wanted something refreshing. And I've actually not had this before, so I wanted to see how sweet it was. And then how can you eat in the wizarding world and not get a butterbeer? This is the classic liquid butterbeer. There are seven different forms of butterbeer that you can eat throughout the wizarding world. I did a video once where I ate all of them in one day. And I think most popular is probably the frozen because we're in Florida. My personal favorite is the hot, but considering it's 1,000 degrees outside, I went for what I think is actually a little underrated at this point, just the classic liquid. Let's dive in. I love that the fish and chips here, it's never frozen, it's lightly battered white fish. I love that they give you a lemon to squeeze fresh lemon juice on it. I love that the tartar sauce is house made, and I love that on the table they give you the bottle of malt vinegar, which I put a disgusting amount on. I don't know how they get it perfect every single time. It is light, it is crispy, the fish is fresh. Whatever the batter is, is perfect. It's uh, almost taste tempura, like it's not, but the texture reminds me of tempura fried, so it's not super heavy weighing it down. The house made tartar sauce is perfect. You cannot go wrong with fish and chips, nor with the potatoes. They're lightly seasoned fried potatoes. Kind of reminds me of Old Bay seasoning on them. Crispy on the outside, nice and doughy on the inside of the tea. Yeah, that tastes like lemonade and tea mixed. It's good, it's refreshing. It's nice to know that's here if you don't want one of the super sweet wizarding drinks. And as a reminder, there is no soda in the wizarding world. If you want Coke, Diet Coke, anything else, you're gonna have to go to one of the other lands to get it. And last but certainly not least, butterbeer. 
if you don't get a sweet Ted Lasso butterbeer mustache, did you even drink butterbeer? Is butterbeer super, super sweet? Yes. It tastes like drinking a cupcake. The topping on there is vanilla. It tastes like frosting. The actual drink itself is like cream soda and toffee. I find that the liquid kind is less sweet than the hot or the frozen. It tastes more like a soda than it does like a cupcake, but it's still very, very sweet. Honestly, though, it doesn't matter which one you get. You have to drink butterbeer when you're in the Wizarding World. It's just a rule. Yeah, I think it's a no-brainer that I think it's worth it to eat in the three broomsticks. Number one, diehard Harry Potter fans, so of course I want to eat in the Wizarding World. Number two, the quality of the food is excellent. The fish and chips remain my favorite fish and chips that I've ever had. Uh, the chicken's great, the ribs are great, everything is really good here. The potatoes are awesome. You can get your butterbeer sitting down in air conditioning. You can enjoy some other desserts as well, like the uh, ice cream from a cup, or you can get apple pie, which is very, very good. I almost got that. You can get some of the Wizarding World beverages. So I think the food is really unique and really good. When I don't think it's possibly worth it to eat here is if you wait in a really long line and then you have to wait over an hour to get your food. But that can be the case pretty much any quick service restaurant in Universal if you eat at peak meal times. If you go between like 11.30 and 1.30 on a weekend in the summer, same thing from like 5.30 to 8 or so dinner time, it's going to be very, very busy in here and then it's probably not worth it. In that case, I highly recommend either one doing breakfast, which is great. Not enough people know you can get breakfast in the Wizarding World and that includes a drink no matter if if you're a kid or an adult, you can get a butter beer included with your meal. Number two, if you're gonna come for lunch or dinner during those times because you want the fish and chips, I don't blame you. Come for an early lunch, a late lunch, an early dinner, or a late dinner, and you're much less likely to run into those long lines. All I can say, if you're a Harry Potter fan especially, I think you absolutely should eat in the Wizarding World, and this would be my choice. Spot number two on our list, the Toothsome Chocolate Emporium and Savory Feast Kitchen. This is the only full service sit-down restaurant on our list, and you probably know it for having those over-the-top milkshakes, the kind that have a whole dessert on top of your dessert. In addition to the over-the-top desserts, they feature chocolate throughout the menu in both the sweet and savory items. They have a full bar, they have a walk-up sweet shop, they have a candy store you can go to as well. But is this food overhyped or is it actually worth a stop? A lot of times gimmicky themed restaurants like this aren't worth the hype. The food isn't that good and they're really expensive and while it may be really Instagrammable, it's not actually worth your time or your money. So we are headed into Toothsome to see what happens today to see if this is worth it. Toothsome Chocolate Emporium and Savory Feast Kitchen has a steampunk vibe. And as I was coming in, I actually got to meet the owner and host of Toothsome, Professor Dr. Penelope. Hello, how are you? Hello. Could you tell me your name? My name? Yes. Is, uh, is this for the record? Yes, All right. the oh, official right. record, I, yes. I love to do it for the record. Yes. My name is Professor Dr. Penelope Thibault Tinker Toothsome. That's <laughs> Professor and Doctor. Good for and you. My name is Jacques. Hello, my Jacques. Friend, my brother, my muse. Huh? Thank you, Megan. Yes, <laughs> yes. And what is your name? My name is Molly. Hello, Molly. Molly. Yes. Nice Molly. to meet you. What brings you in today, Molly? Chocolate. Oh, you've come to the right of place. Course. Is there another answer? <laughs> no, no, I don't the think so. The only thing more is to get more detailed with it. Type mm. of chocolate, texture of chocolate, mm -hmm. how what? much chocolate. How you would like your chocolate, whether it be a cake or ice cream or a pudding or a fudge or a candy. Or drizzled or scooped. That's true. Or poured from a, a lever. Correct. All of that. Uh, all the toppings. I could have all have the you, chocolate. Have you thought about any of these? I, I got a lot of chocolate thinking to do, I think. So, yeah. yeah. It's best to be yeah. prepared. Yes, yeah, yeah I'll yes. do that. Yes. So, Please thank enjoy you. I will. So thank much. you. It was nice meeting you, Molly. Bye. <laughs> so, she is a worldwide traveler and inventor who loves chocolate. So, she built the Emporium and she also built Jacques, her robot friend, to share their chocolate loves with people all over the world. There's actually another sad backstory of Tusum where, like, her parents left to find her because she was exploring and then she came home and they were gone and you can actually see the memo, the note between each other. So it's part of the reason she built the Emporium is so that hopefully they'll find her again one day. But that's sad, so I choose to focus on the chocolate aspect of it. But meeting Penelope and most importantly Jacques is a very cool way to start your experience here. The entire restaurant is steampunk themed and around the restaurant you will see maps and inventions by Penelope and Jacques because of course she is an explorer slash inventor as she told me when I met her. I love the attention to detail in places like this. If you take a look at her chalkboard, she's got different recipes and graphs and science she's doing to find the perfect chocolate. And it's just a fun vibe in here. The music's fun, it's fun to watch out the window and see what's going on in the chocolate factory. I mean, they are using blimps 
inside, which feels very dangerous, but you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll trust them, I guess. And it's really fun with Jacques and Penelope walking around and talking to guests about what they ordered and making jokes and, and of course, talking about chocolate. They got a choco lot to talk about. Taking a look at the Tusa menu, you're going to see chocolate throughout the savory courses as well as dessert, starting with things like the warm chocolate almond bread, which is delicious, basically fresh chocolate bread. Uh, but they have also things without chocolate, like crab dip, truffle fries. Uh, they've got a baked brie. They have um, pork belly sliders that come with chocolate dipped bacon on top. That's interesting. Nachos, Brussels sprouts, etc. They have a couple of salads. The toothsome niçoise is a fun uh, name for a salad, but they've got a variety there, some lighter than others. Soup, a couple of flatbreads, barbecue chicken, short rib flatbread. That sounds delightful. A um, couple of sandwiches as well, including a Monte Cristo, Croque Monsieur, uh, Southern Fried Chicken BLT, as well as a bunch of burgers. They are known for having great burgers here. The Tour de France is one of their signature ones. It has a sunny side up egg on there, as well as brie and some other items. Pastas, I've tried a couple of the pastas here at a media event once, um, and they were very good. I liked the wild mushroom chicken risotto and the gnocchi. Um, and then they have a variety of entrees. The braised short rib is one of my go-tos. It comes with a cocoa sauce on top, again, getting that chocolate in. They've also got meatloaf, chicken, um, a filet, a couple fish items, and chocolate even extends to the drink menu. They've got a great cocktail bar here, and they have features like the old chocolate fashioned, which, spoiler alert, is right there. They've also got a vanilla chocolate cocktail, the chocolate coffee banana cocktail, the curious cacao, tons of different choices and a lot of them are old-fashioned uh, based which I'm a big fan of obviously. Got a couple mocktails and then they have a bunch of bourbon. They're considered a bourbon bar here so maybe I'm biased towards enjoying them for that reason. They even have their own chocolate beer. The Two Chocolate Stout is a custom beer made just for Toothsome. When Alan and I do the um, custom beer video that we have in our brains, we will be coming here to try that. So this is the old chocolate fashion, and as Jock just said, chocolate is always in fashion. It's got bird dog chocolate whiskey, cherry liqueur, sugar chocolate, and orange bitters. So it dances on possibly being too sweet, but I figure when in chocolate town, do the chocolate things. Hello again. Hello Hi. again, Penelope and Jock. I got this chocolate beverage. I'm very Ooh. excited about Ooh, it. The old chocolate fashion? Yes. Good yes. choice. Yes. Old chocolate as fashion. much chocolate as possible. That's what you said. Yes, That's fantastic. Right. <laughs> and chocolate is always in fashion. Yes. Next step is a chocolate appetizer. That's the that's what I'm looking at. Perfect. Yes. All right. Yes. And then a chocolate entree. Yes. And then three desserts. Three yes, desserts. Minimum. Minimum. Yes. Minimum. Okay. <laughs> we'll work on that. Cheers. <laughs> It tastes like dessert, like it straight up tastes like chocolate, but it's got that kind of burny bourbon feeling on the back end, so it balances it a little bit. I think next time I would ask to see if they could do half regular bourbon and half the chocolate bourbon to kind of cut some of the sweetness, because it definitely is sweeter than a drink I normally would enjoy. That said, it's fun. It tastes like a chocolate Tootsie Pop in an old fashioned had a delicious cocktail baby. Maybe it would be a better after dinner drink because it does taste like chocolate and it has some dessert elements to it, but we're saving that time for milkshakes and this is fun. So if you like old fashions and chocolate, might as well give it a whirl. I just can't say no to cheese, so I'm trying the baked brie en croute. It's got raspberry marmalade and it's served with fresh fruit, toasted almonds, the chocolate almond bread and oven baked lavash. Part of the reason I got this is because I wanted to be able to review the almond bread, the chocolate almond bread, which I've had before, but I didn't want the whole loaf of it. And now I get to have cheese, which is always the goal. Cut into this. Oh, there's so much cheese in there. It's hard to cut with one hand, but yum. Ugh. That looks so tasty. Tons of cheese in there. And you've got your fresh berries. Ooh, yum. Got the raspberry jam in there. It's inside the baked brie. I'm trying it on the lavash bread first. Okay, that is fantastic. First of all, the baked brie is delicious. There's tons of brie cheese. It's got that flaky pastry crust and a little bit of sweetness from the jam inside there. There's not a ton of the jam though, so it's mostly that cheese flavor. However, with the lavash, which is crunchy and perfect by the way, um, I added one of the fresh strawberries and it was divine. Now we're gonna try it with the chocolate bread to see if this becomes too rich. What happens? Mm. 
That is fantastic. Now the chocolate bread is kind of like a really thick chocolate muffin is how I would describe the flavor. So it's really rich and chocolatey and on its own, it's delicious, but it's not a normal bread that a lot of people are just gonna eat a bunch of pieces of because it is very sweet and it's very rich. This, however, when you add the brie cheese to it, it cuts it up a little bit. And I also added some of the almonds. So it added a little bit of a crunch. This is delightful. This is like a sweet, savory moment. For me, this is a perfect dessert because I'm more of a savory person than a sweet person, so it's a good blend of both. But this is very nice. I've also had just the bread, and if you've got a big group, it's fun to try at least a piece of it. I've had the Brussels sprouts, which are really good. Um, honestly, all the food I've ever had here is really good, and I'm not just saying that because this is the kind of place that I normally would be like, yeah, it's fun in here, but the food's meh. The food's not meh, and that continues to be the case. For my entree, I ended up just getting another appetizer. These are the coffee and chocolate stout chicken wings, and honestly, you had me at coffee. But these are flash fried chicken wings topped with a chocolate stout sauce and some sesame seeds. And we got a lot to eat today, so I was considering the short rib, but because it comes with grits and a whole side and all the things, I thought I'd just go for another appetizer, a light bite, if you will. These are actually very good chicken wings. First of all, the texture is perfect. The flash fry makes the outside and the skin really, really crispy, but it maintains the moisture inside so the meat's not dry. So they're cooked to perfection. I will say there's not a ton of this coffee chocolate stout. I don't really taste much of it, and I wish I tasted more. I wish I could taste deliberate hints of both coffee and chocolate, and I can't. Mostly I just taste a slightly sweet but well-cooked chicken wing. So I think these are good. If you like wings, I think you'd enjoy them. But I also think there's probably better options on the menu. I, again, really like the short rib. I like some of the other appetizers, um, the burgers. But these are fun and a good shareable. Or if you're like me, just want to eat a plate of wings. But next time I think I would get one of the burgers. Taking a look at the dessert menu, of course, this is what they're known for, the big freak shake. So all of these milkshakes come in a souvenir cup and then they have another full dessert on top of them. I think the most iconic one is probably the confetti shake, which is like a funfetti cake on top of a vanilla ice cream milkshake. Uh, my personal favorite is the That's Mint, which has got mint ice cream and then a big handmade mint chocolate chip ice cream sandwich on top. It's got Andy's mints. I like the cookie jar, which is made of different cookies, Oreos, uh, chocolate chip and oatmeal cookies. And I also noticed that they do a flight for $50. You get to choose five of them and then try a smaller portion, which would be a great option if you had a bunch of people and you wanted to all try something different. They also typically have a seasonal shake. Right now it's a pride shake that looks really fun with fruity pebbles um, and rainbow cake on top. Then they have a bunch of other desserts as well, things like triple chocolate bread pudding, chocolate creme brulee, and then a variety of sundaes. I'm actually gonna get a sundae, I'm gonna mix it up. I normally get a milkshake. I've tried pretty much all the milkshakes, I think, at this point, so I figured go for something different, review something new. Um, things that caught my eye, the May Contain Nuts, which is a peanut butter themed sundae. We've also got the birthday cake sundae, which literally has birthday cakes on it. The s'mores sundae, so there's a lot to choose from if you've got a sweet tooth. My dessert has arrived. I went for the strawberry cheesecake sundae. So this has strawberry peanut butter ice cream as your base layer, which is what immediately intrigued me because that's my favorite flavor over in Wizarding World. And then it comes topped with a piece of cheesecake, white chocolate almond bark, and chocolate covered strawberries, house made whipped cream. I love chocolate strawberries. I love strawberry as a dessert flavor. I love strawberry and chocolate. So I think this is going to be fabulous. All right, I'm gonna try and get a little bit of everything. Here's a little piece of the cheesecake, a little bit of the ice cream. Cheers. Mm. I'm not being dramatic when I say this is one of the best desserts I've had at Universal, maybe in a theme park. And that's because while it is incredible and over the top and ridiculous that you've got a piece of cake on top of a sundae and a chocolate covered strawberries and all the things, the flavors are simple and they go together really, really well. I'm convinced this is the same strawberry peanut butter ice cream that they have in Wizarding World in Diagon Alley, which is my favorite flavor. Peanut butter is really strong. And then you've got that fruity, not artificial tasting strawberry to balance it out. The cheesecake is really interesting because it tastes like they made it with sour cream, um, which is also, if you get the strawberry cheesecake milkshake, it's sour cream ice cream, which doesn't sound appealing, but that kind of tanginess is doing a really good job balancing how sweet everything else is. You can tell the white chocolate almond bark was homemade. I love a chocolate covered strawberry. This is a fantastic dessert. And while their milkshakes are really, really good, this is a fantastic, very easily shareable sundae. And Tusum is definitely the dessert king. No questions asked here at Universal. Wrapped up at Tusum Chocolate Emporium and Sayri Feast Kitchen, is it worth it? In my opinion, 
yes. If you're looking for a sit down location for maybe a lunch when you're in the parks or dinner after being in the parks, I really like Tootsome. Yes, it's a gimmicky restaurant that has things like milkshakes with full pieces of cake in them. And they've got the whole chocolate shtick and they've got the whole steampunk vibe. It's very themed. But I absolutely think the food matches the experience. I think the food surprises me every time. I think the food's very high quality. You can tell a lot of it is made from scratch. I think the prices, while high because we're at a theme park, I don't think are ridiculous for the quality and the portions that you get. And I think the theme is really fun. I love that Jacques the Robot is out to talk to you. I love the steampunk vibe. The desserts are ridiculous but equally good. I do recommend getting reservations to Tootsome. You can book them through the Universal website uh, because it does get very popular. However, if you don't want to do a full sit-down situation, if you don't have a reservation, you can just come into the soda fountain here and you can get the sundaes and the shakes and the desserts to go, which I do recommend if you've got a sweet tooth. You can sit out here on the patio and enjoy a delicious dessert. I love Tootsome. I'm delighted every time I go and I will continue to return. But for now, we've got to do something a little more banana. Headed to our final restaurant for today's video. This is the newest restaurant here in Universal Orlando. We are headed into the brand new Minion Land, which just soft opened. Now the new attraction Villain Con hasn't opened yet, but they opened up the quick service restaurant, the bakery and the store. We're going to check that all out and see if it's worth all of the hype leading up to it, all of the rave reviews that have come in so far. It's time to go see the Minions. Welcome to the all new Minion Land. It is serving blockbuster realness. Now it is all opening up across from the current Minions attraction, which is Despicable Me Minion Mayhem, which is a 3D adventure with Gru and the Garls, where you get shrunk down to the size of a minion. And opening later this summer, we've got Villain Con Minion Blast, which is going to be a shooter style attraction. I'm actually very excited about it because I love those style of games because you can replay them over and over again and uh, try and improve your score. A lot of rewritability on shooter style attractions. Plus, Universal took out some patents for some new technology, so I'm excited to see what happens. What has opened already, however, is Bake My Day, the dessert shop themed to the bakery in Despicable Me 2, as well as the Minions Cafe. You've also got Evil Stuff, the store, so let's see what we can find. Popping into the store, we've got a lot of fun merchandise featuring, of course, the minions, but also like all the bad guys throughout the minions universe. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you, I need to brush up on my, my minions cinematic universe. I haven't seen all of them in a very long time, but I do know this one. He's my favorite one. He has sharks as part of his defense mechanism, which I really enjoy. But we've got all kinds of goodies in here. Minion plushes, apparel, spear jersey, sweatshirt, hat, water bottle, more minions, fart gun. There you go. That's what you want to get your kids. These very cute minion themed lounge fly bags. I have a Harry Potter bag that's that size and I love it. I travel with it consistently. You've got a U design to do custom phone cases, more apparel. I love these figurines of the different minions dressed like the villains. Wait a minute. What are you doing? Shopping. Well, after you make that very necessary purchase, do you want to go eat a bunch of food at the Minions Cafe? Abs yeah, absolutely. We'll come back. Checking out the new area, you've got a meet and greet spot where there are some minions out right now, but I've also seen characters from Sing, that Ooh. movie there. Yeah, like the gorilla, which is very exciting. This is maybe the funniest thing yet. It says overalls, one size fits all. But then offers fittings by appointment only. Very funny, very genuine minion quality. <laughs> this is delightful. Here we have Bake My Day, which we're gonna come into for dessert after lunch. So cute, and I love the giant pink cupcake on top. You've also got freeze ray pops. Adorable. Specialty popsicles. Mobile pickup too, but that might be mobile pickup for the Minion Cafe, which is where we're headed. Just past the Bank of Evil. Do you think I could make a deposit? That would be admitting to you being evil though, so do you want to do that? No, people can't know. Right, that's the problem. There's also Pop Banana Popcorn Stand, which serves beer and popcorn, including banana flavored popcorn. Do you feel good about that? I love banana flavor. I think you're gonna be the taste tester for all the artificial banana today. I accept. And we are now in line for Minions Cafe, which does offer mobile order, but you can expect there to be a little bit of a line, especially right now during the summer as it just opened. I would say on a weekend, it probably gets much longer than this and you should get here early. Well, let's go ahead and move order and take a look at the menu. The menu starts with Despicables. <laughs> we love we love a pun. 
Uh, you've got things like El Macho's Ropa Vieja, Carl's Crispy Cauliflower. Otto's Noodle Bowl. I haven't seen a noodle bowl in a theme park quick service option before. That's I'm looking forward to that. That looks good. You want the noodle bowl? Okay. Also, I would like to try this. Angus's Honeymoon Soup. It's green tomato soup with pork belly on top. Huh. And then it has a pimento cheese grilled cheese. I can't tell if the green soup is going to throw me or not. Uh, let's see. Some sandwiches. So you've got a pork sandwich. And, ooh, steak and cheese, right? This is a French onion sandwich. And it has a... Skew, like a squirt pipe of cheese, so we're gonna need that. I love a pipette of cheese. Now, do you want to get dessert here, or do you want to go to the bakery? I mean, I want to go get a Freezy Pop, but I'll accept either one. All right, we're gonna get dessert elsewhere, but they do have a cute cupcake and a Swiss cake roll that's banana flavored. You can get a side of the Minion Tots if you'd like. We have those coming with our sandwich, which I'm super excited about. Do you want to try one more entree? What about the cauliflower? That seems intriguing. The crispy cauliflower. Okay. And then as far as drinks go, of course they have all kinds of things. We're going to add two cups of water. It's nice they added that to the mobile order. And then they've got two specialty beverages here. They have a strawberry kiwi lemonade with Pop Rocks. Oh, oh good. We love Pop Rocks in a beverage. And a banana flavored drink that I'm going to I'm going to assume <laughs> you're really excited about. Yeah. I'm I'm excited. There's also kids meals, like little small versions of the grilled cheese and mac and cheese with the tots, but we're not gonna get those. And we'll go ahead and check out. It actually only took about 10 minutes to get inside and it is so cute in here. We'll have to do a more detailed walkabout after we've eaten, but first glance, this is adorable. They've done such a good job of theming this area to the film series I, and the minions themselves. Like I'm, the chaos is everywhere but it works this is like when max and i are in the kitchen i love the fact that they put googly eyes on like all the appliances i love the the duck system that's like sending orders and bananas and different things around the restaurant but please don't put googly eyes on appliances at home i'm gonna put googly eyes <laughs> on our blender <laughs> what a great blender i personally love the break room i think that's my favorite room in here i can't wait to walk through it it's just I know, I love like the water cooler with goldfish in it and the vending machine and it's super cute. There's also a minion stuck in the freezer over there. So we're gonna do a more detailed lap in a second because our first course has already arrived. Can you call this a course really? Yeah, I can. Cause it's the first thing that came out to our table and in <laughs> winter picks dinner drinks is a course. So these are both specialty non-alcoholic beverages. This one is the PX41 Punch. It features the evil purple minions from Despicable Me 2. It's lemonade with strawberry kiwi, um, evil minion colored topping, and blue raspberry pop rocks. And look how cute the cup is. And according to our server, the antidote will cure whatever makes you evil from the PX41 Punch. And that is oodles of banana flavor. It says oodles, oh boy. Oodles of banana flavor with minion colored topping and graham cracker crumbles. Apparently this tastes like a banana cream pie. I do like that they've completed the outfits with minion butts. I do like their butts. Nuts for butts over here. Cheers. Don't try to mix it. Yeah, I was say don't try to mix it in Those are flavors. I don't know what I was expecting. Huh. I don't like strawberry kiwi, so I don't know why I expected to like this. Let's see how you like that. It's growing on me like a fungus. I don't like artificial fruit flavor, so I'm the worst person to review these probably. And I also don't love strawberry kiwi. That said, as the ice melts and it gets more diluted, it dilutes some of that sugary sweetness. I think it's really fun. The cup's cute. I'm not the target audience for this, but your kids are and they're going to like this. I like it. It's not what I was expecting. I expected a smoothie, if I'm being honest with you, but it is a light soda. Far more sugary than I'm normally used to, but I like it. Does it taste like banana cream pie? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I'm sure you knew I was making two changes. Stop it. It honestly kind of tastes like if it was like a banana cream sickle, so kind of. I don't get what I would expect for like a graham cracker situation in this. It's mostly just 
like a creamy banana situation. If you're not a fan of like a runts banana situation, please don't get this. You won't enjoy it. You're not going to get a real banana flavor. You're getting very candy banana. It took a little bit, probably 20, 25 minutes or so for a drive, but keep in mind they did just open. They're still working the kinks out. This is still technically a soft open, but be prepared to not get your food instantly. And we also ordered a lot. However, <laughs> the main course has arrived. Starting things off with the Agnes Honeymoon Soup. It's green tomato soup with a crispy pork belly, tomato gummy bear, and basil oil served with a pimento cheddar grilled cheese. I'm sorry, did you say tomato gummy bear? Yeah, it's in there. I see it. Huh. Huh. Okay. Interesting. We also got Otto's Noodle Bowl, which is slow roasted porchetta, udon noodles, tare egg, cilantro, roast corn, a shrimp dumpling, and tonkotsu broth. What was nice, they prepared a table side for us. Right, they, had, they pulled up a little minion head and the noodles spilled out, and then the broth as well. It was very cool. Now this one I'm super excited about. This is the steak and cheese ray sandwich. It's a French onion dipped roast beef, caramelized onion, secret sauce, and a cheesy blast of pimento cheese on a cheddar and onion roll, which means we get to squeeze the pipette full of cheese. And then this has the minion tots on the side. You can get these on the side of multiple things, or you can just get an order of them. But they're potato tater tots shaped like minions, and they're the cutest things I've ever seen. And lastly, we got Carl's crispy cauliflower, which is crispy cauliflower florets with a sweet and spicy chili sauce, coconut blue rice, Thai cucumbers, and edamame. Yeah, everybody here is so good. Well, thank you so much. This is going well. The pipette has been squeezed, and now I'm trying the steak and cheese ray. Oh my gosh, that's delicious. It's very messy. The shaved meat is going everywhere. It's all spilling out, but it's really good. Oh, wow. The beef is super tender. I wish there were more caramelized onions to kind of cut through the really rich cheese sauce. I like the secret sauce, which is all over my face, I'm sure. It tastes like a Thousand Island or Big Mac sauce. Really soft, cheesy roll. This is a win in my book. Messy, but a win. And most importantly, it's time to eat one of these little minions tater tots. Yeah, my bag's already full, babe. Well, that's delicious. It's just a tater tot, but it's crispy on the outside, tender on the inside. I'm gonna dip it in the cheese sauce that's falling off my sandwich, and these are awesome. Okay. Now, on the face of it, a grilled cheese and tomato soup combination seems simple. Uh, I've not ever had a tomato gummy worm before, so this is going to be a first for me. We got to start with a dip. Mm. A nice crunchy exterior on the bread that's impressed with a waffle maker. So it gives it a really unique texture, but it is very crispy and crunchy on the exterior. Soft on the inside with a lot of cheese. Good ratio. Good pimento cheese, too. Yeah. You can taste that it's actually pimento cheese and not just cheese. Now, on the taste of the soup the first time around, it tasted a little spicy and a little more bitter than I'd anticipate from a tomato soup. And that holds true here. I mean, a green tomato is a younger tomato, so it's not going to have the full sweetness of a red tomato. But Ooh. it's very good, and it carries some spiciness with it, along with... Um, I guess that's the tomato gummy worm. I, I'm, there's a flavor in there that I'm having trouble identifying. Well, there's I'm just basil gonna... oil. There's pork belly. I think this is very good and mm. more unique than just regular tomato soup. That's pretty good. I dig it. I'm trying the cauliflower now. This is a vegan dish. We confirm with the cast. It's not only vegetarian, but it is also vegan. So you've got some tempura fried cauliflower, some coconut rice, which I'm excited about. Edamame, cucumbers. Make a little bite here. Mmm. Whoa. Oh, they nailed those Thai cucumbers. The mm. rice is really good, too. I think there's a ton of really good flavor here. There's a, almost a slight sweetness to the tempura. It's got a really good crunch, and I really like the coconut rice because I love the coconut flavor. What I'm missing is a sauce. There needs to be some kind of, like, almost like a sweet Thai chili sauce would be really good on these cauliflower because they're a little dry right now. So I might ask for some kind of sauce to dip it in, but they seem really busy, and I don't want to be that person. Um, but otherwise, I think this is a really good and fun dish, especially if you're vegan and looking for something. Last but certainly not least, we have our noodle bowl. These noodles are huge. I'm going to try to get a bite of them along with some corn. Oh, wow, this is going to be messy. And some pork belly, which is just falling apart over here. Okay, well, itadakimasu. First of all, those noodles are a mouthful. I made a mistake trying to get that many at one time. 
The broth itself, they've got some rich flavor there. It's super deep, soy, like a dark soy sauce, some ginger on the back end as well. That's frankly a lot better than I anticipated coming from a theme park. Uh, for like tonkatsu broth, but very, very good. I enjoy that a lot. The pork belly is thinly shaved and it's nice and salty uh, along with the noodles to really balance out this dish. All right, let's try the shrimp dumpling now. There's so many elements to this dish. This is gonna be unattractive. I'm sorry. Oh, that's just a full shrimp. I have to say, not my favorite. It's a little fishy, more than I'd anticipate. But I think as a whole, we're only getting one of those. I might not be the biggest fan, but I'm also not the biggest shrimp fan in general, so you might not want to ask me. I want to eat this egg. It looks like it's been soy marinated. Mm, that's good. Mm. Overall, I'm impressed. For coming out of a theme park, I would not expect this type of bowl to be this quality. So I'm a fan. Is it going to be the best bowl you've ever had? No, but it's pretty darn good for a theme park. Okay, now having been nicely satisfied with that meal, let's take a lap and point out some of the fun details. This room has the pet rocks all over the place that they paint, and they're all in glass cases, and you can tell on some of them who painted them. <laughs> There's also some very cute props, quote, from the movie in cases, like the teddy bear, and you can see where people are uh, sucking up the bananas, the, the start of the... The start oh, of the duck right. system is here. <laughs> the whole thing is designed to be like the Minions cafeteria, like the Minions are in charge. So you can also see into the kitchen and see the Minions causing chaos. Again, everywhere there are bananas. Just so many bananas and a lot of yellow. And they put googly eyes on so many appliances. I'm going to do this in our home. Uh, oh, cool. I love the detail right here of the chef minions making different items. And if you look closely, you'll see different things like a boot or like the teddy bear. Well, and this boot fell off of that poor guy. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Little minion foot. Also in the freezer over here, you actually have a little minion who got trapped. <laughs> oh no. Well, he looks like he's hard at work. I think so. he's doing a check. He's got tasks. He's, he's got a checklist going mm. on. Oh, look, a banana neon sign. That is a cool sign. Do you want that for the house? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't like bananas the same way minions do. I don't think anybody likes bananas the same way minions do. And this, the break room. It's so cute in here. The detail is unbelievable. Like, you've got all the punch-in cards right here. On the bulletin board, you've got tons of different signs and advertisements, Bake My Day poster. Oh, we got a cosplay contest coming up. A rubber duck for sale. Wait, this is funny. If you <laughs> lost my rubber duck and then right next to it, it's rubber duck for sale. <laughs> <laughs> Do cook bananas, lick sides to clean. Ew. <laughs> Don't use to dry off overalls. <laughs> follow microwave rules. Don't follow the microwave. Don't follow the microwave <laughs> That's rules. That's funny. We have goldfish in the water container. <laughs> There's also hilarious signs of 30 ways to take a minion break, like a union break, and it's different activity ideas. There's also tables that literally are playable foosball, if you'd like to, and, the, awesome. goal, and the goalie is grew. <laughs> I also love all of these motivational posters. Collaboration, share the credit, not the work. <laughs> Teamwork means it's nobody's fault. <laughs> Motivation, the most important ingredient. What do the minions keep in their lockers? Bananas. This one has one of the teddy bears. You got somebody making some form of like drink contraption. A ray gun. An, a a bird chicken. Minion? Oh, look at these. Energy drink and, and cookies. So like what we keep in our lockers. Yeah, chickens. And we've got a great set of items you can find in a vending machine. Like Boots. a ray gun. Ah. Toupee. There's pet rocks. A whole Sunday. Like PX41. What makes the Sunday? It's hilarious. This whole thing is so detailed and so cute. Definitely come look in here, especially if you've got a Minion fan. Okay, that was a delightful experience. What a cute restaurant. Now, it did take a while to get the food. Like I said, I would say that's the con. When you think quick service, you don't typically think of it taking 25-ish minutes to well, show up, but- Quick isn't the name. It was all really good. You could tell a lot of it was made to order, made from scratch. It, the food was much better than I expected from a a Minions themed restaurant. <laughs> I mean, listen, it had no business being as good as it was for a quick service option. I enjoyed that far more than I thought I would going into it. 
Plus the detail and the restaurant is super duper cute. And the food is cute too. It reminded me of the food in Super Nintendo World out in Hollywood, but mm. honestly, I think better. No hesitation, better for sure. Good variety, some different stuff you don't see at theme parks a lot. And I think this is a slam dunk, honestly. And I'm not even like a diehard Minions fan. I think they're cute, but like, if you've got a Minion in your group, they're gonna love this. You think people are just walking around with Minions? I don't know what Minions do. Fair enough. It could uh, be anywhere. You could be uh, three minions in a trench coat. How would I know? Blast, you found me out. <laughs> what was your favorite thing inside? I think it was the grilled cheese and the tomato soup, which mm. again, at the start of that, I, I did not think it would make the list. Uh, that was my favorite. I just think it was such a unique take on it. And the tomato soup itself actually shocked me. What about for you? I was most surprised by the cauliflower dish. I thought that was really delicious. I thought it was light and bright, and I wish it had a sauce that would have made it perfect to me. Um, but I think the one I enjoyed the most flavor-wise was the uh, steak and ray sandwich. It was a really good French dip, and I love the cheese pipette, and of course, those little minion tots. But I love the variety here, and I think this is a great addition. Now, I'm very full, so I think we're gonna have to save the popcorn for another day. Blast, but I do really want a popsicle. I do think I can fit dessert in well, here. Well, it's a separate stomach. Exactly. So. Exactly. Headed into Bake My Day, I love that the giant cupcake is actually a tank. I kind of forget that Gru is a supervillain and the minions are like his henchmen. <laughs> and it's very funny when you think about that. <gasps> oh, do I need this? <clears throat> it's like the ears of Minion Land. As to be expected, it is very cute and very pink in here. I love that there's a minion stuck to the ceiling with gum, ice cream, something generally sticky. Unknown, really. Taking a look at the Bake My Day bakery case, we start off with macarons. We've got passion fruit, raspberry champagne, snickerdoodle, birthday cake, strawberry cheesecake, cotton candy, bubblegum, cookies and cream, chocolate pretzel, cotton candy, blueberry lemonade, and bananas foster. We also have a variety of mini whoopie pies here. S'mores, s'mores, s'mores. Apple cookie. Turns out the macarons are $3.75 each, or you can get six for 20, so. Math. The math is mathin', I got six. Do I remember which six flavors I got? That's a good question. No, I don't, so I'm gonna try to blindly review them right now. <laughs> I do wanna say they're really good macarons. Like the texture, nailed it. I think that one might be birthday cake. I think this one's gonna be Oreo based on the colors. Oreo. This one I think is chocolate pretzel. Mmm, it is. This one is blueberry lemon. Mmm, I like that one a lot. That's strawberry cheesecake. That was birthday cake, and this is raspberry champagne, and that was my favorite. But I think good. these are good and cute, and a fun dessert and an easy take home. And you know, now we have, based on the math of what's left, uh, approximately three macarons to take yeah, with us. Who doesn't want to eat these when you get home? Look at, hey, just look at that beautiful half eaten box. Hey, you know what? It's just as good. Well, you do need a little after park snack on the drive home. Yeah, exactly. A little nibble. All right, I want to go get a mint. A lemon mint, I'm sorry, a popsicle. Possible. Seated directly next to Bake My Day is Freeze Ray Pops, which as the name would suggest, is a home of specialty popsicles. They have the Minion, which is a banana popsicle. Good guess. And the Gru, which is, if my eyes are correct, Nutella. My laser eyeballs say you're correct on both accounts. Oh, wonderful. There's also a number of other popsicles that they have listed from mango, cheesecake, cotton candy, but I have my eye on lemon mint, which just sounds refreshing. It really does. And if I hadn't just eaten one six, six halves, one, one six, one half of six macaroons. So three macaroons. <laughs> that's how. Hey, hey, that's how that math maths. I don't know. I don't think I, I think I ate a little bit more of this one. You know, I ate approximately three and a half macaroons. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh, macaroons, excuse me. But my eyeballs like the look of a coconut one on on another day. Oh. I love coconut. Honestly. I'm really a fan of this type of venue opening because this is what I want on a hot day in a theme park, especially as summer's right around the corner. A custom popsicle, that's just going to hit right. I hope it's delicious. All right, lemon mint. All right, that's phenomenal. Wait, no. Light, tangy, mm. just enough mint on the back end. And best of all, it's cold. So refreshing. Oh, yeah. That is a delightful little treat. 11 out of 10 would recommend. It's a hot day in Florida. Stop by, get yourself a popsicle. It's good.
Well, that is a wrap. Ate at three of the most popular restaurants here at Universal Orlando. And I think that you saw that pending the audience, pending the situation, I think all of them can be worth it. And I also really want to shout out Universal for pushing their food boundaries. I think a few years ago, people didn't think of Universal Orlando as somewhere that had good food. And seeing the places we went today, especially the brand new Minion spot, I think that cannot be said anymore. I loved Minion's Land. I thought it was great. And personally, I can't wait to try more flavors of Popsicle and some more of their sweet treats, which is odd for me. Normally not a sweet guy. I'm excited to eat more Minion's Tots in the future. So let us know what else you want to see and let us know what other restaurants you want us to head to. In the meantime, friends, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and join us in the conversation on Discord. You can find all those links down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been so magical. It really has. Bye. Popsicle. Banana. Popsicle. Banana.